Hey YouTube, welcome back to another production from Chaos Chem. Sorry it's been a while, but I have been trying to find alternative employment and just been busy all around. But I wanted to get another video out to you guys as soon as I possibly could. So without further ado, here it goes. Uh, today I am going to show you how to make calcium nitrate. And uh, we are going to be doing this uh, by way of some azeotropic nitric acid, which I showed you how to make in a uh, previous video. So uh, if you're not sure what I am talking about, azeotropic nitric acid is around 70%, and that means that it has the same uh, specific gravity or density that water has. And uh, again, I said I uh, showed you how to make this in a previous video. So if anybody who's watching this does not know how to make nitric acid already, feel free to peruse my channel and you will find a link to a, uh, well, I think it's a pretty decent nitric acid video on there. So anyhow, here we go. In this beaker with a stir bar right here, I have approximately 65 milliliters of 68% nitric acid and I'm going to turn on some stirring a little bit there again I said that I am going to be making calcium nitrate and I'm going to use this in a future video to again make nitric acid however uh, the nitric acid that I'm going to be making from the calcium nitrate is going to be higher than azeotropic uh, I, what I am shooting for is actually around 90% nitric acid and this can be obtained using the calcium nitrate because of the equilibrium uh, that uh, uh, basically is achieved uh, through the chemical balance between the calcium, um, in this case we're, we're using uh, calcium nitrate to make nitric acid, and the HNO3, or I'm sorry, the uh, H2SO4, the sulfuric acid, uh, and so without getting into it too much, uh, using the calcium nitrate salt as opposed to sodium or potassium nitrate salt, uh, the equilibrium basically uh, favors the continued production of the nitric acid without having to heat it to the point of decomposition, which is what ends up happening with other uh, nitrate salts, uh, e.g. sodium nitrate or potassium nitrate. So anyhow, uh, that's enough about that. So here in this cup, what I have is exactly 10 grams of calcium carbonate. And I made this by reacting calcium hydroxide with some sodium carbonate. Uh, I have not done a video on that. If anybody would like to see how I did it, uh, please leave it in the comments section and I will definitely show you a video on that. Uh, it, it's actually pretty easy to make, uh, however, you know, if you're not sure how to do it, then, you know, I'll gladly show you. So, uh, without me rambling on anymore, so what we have here is I have already uh, pre-chilled this nitric acid that's in the beaker here. Uh, it is, uh, I would say, roughly around um, mm, 10 degrees Celsius or so, maybe 20 at the most. And the reason that I chilled it is because uh, the carbonate that we are adding here is a pretty decent base and this is a very strong acid. So uh, to control the, the foaming and the release of the carbon dioxide which causes the foaming, uh, that's why I chilled the acid first. And so what that's going to do is it's going to slow the overall reaction at the same time mitigating the carbon dioxide release. Uh, therefore, um, not allowing our reaction to foam over, hopefully, at least in theory, that's that's what I'm shooting for. So, uh, so what we do now is we just take a spoon or some. You can pour it in if you want. However, I'm doing it with a spoon because we want to go slowly, and we just add it in. And I don't know if the camera picked it up at all, but there was a little bit of foaming that occurred there 
and that is basically the release of the carbon dioxide as it hits the acid and thus uh, deprotonating the calcium carbonate so uh, that allows the dioxide uh, to be released and you know I might you know I'm gonna have to stop for a second and put a bigger stir bar in there because that stir bar is not quite grabbing everything okay so I got a bigger stir bar right in there now and that is stirring everything up nicely all of the particulates are swirling around I'm not sure if the camera is quite picking that up let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more well that's that's the maximum that it's going to allow me to zoom in um, let me see if I can maybe get some of this uh, condensation off the glass and see if you guys can see it any better there now I, I apologize this is going to come right back as I said this is about 20c at the most okay well we'll see what that does here so anyhow so uh, like I said this was 10 grams of calcium carbonate and we're just going to continue adding it slowly so we have it all in solution as you can see there there is the foaming coming up that we're trying to mitigate by chilling our acid down and what that foaming actually is is the release of the carbon dioxide uh, from the uh, calcium carbonate and uh, again that happens uh, because uh, the acid is deprotonating the um, calcium carbonate, therefore uh, releasing the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and keeping the calcium ion itself in solution. And then the calcium ion reacts with the nitronium ion, which is the NO, or in this case actually NO3, and then it forms calcium nitrate. So that is the overall reaction that is going on. We'll add a little bit more. You want to make sure that you do this slowly, and again, that is just to basically mitigate the uh, <coughs> excuse me the release of the carbon dioxide. Uh, because if you add too much too quickly, uh, obviously common sense just tells you that the foaming will just foam right up and over, and you will end up. Uh, basically with a nitric acid spill all over your hot plate and whatever is underneath it and that's never really a good thing uh, always want to have uh, some uh, carbonate or bicarbonate on hand just in case that does happen which uh, right here you can see I have a uh, sodium bicarbonate solution it's always sitting right out on top of my desk where I do all of my reactions. I also always have a jar of just uh, the sodium bicarbonate powder um, so that if I spill a, a good sized puddle of any type of acid I will just throw the powder right in it to neutralize it and let it sit. So I don't think you guys really need to see me add all 10 grams of this in there so I am going to cut the video. Uh, we'll come back when all the 10 grams are added and we will see if we need to add any more. Okay, all 10 grams are in and I need to correct myself here. I've been talking about the liberation of carbon dioxide and uh, that's a mistake on my part. I was thinking that I was actually using calcium carbonate but I am actually using calcium hydroxide so uh, what we are seeing is just the liberation of some hydrogen gas and a little bit of uh, oxygen gas. So uh, much apologies if I confused any of you guys. Uh, that was uh, entirely my fault. Uh, again, I for some reason, because I don't have the uh, flask of chemicals sitting right in front of me, I thought that I was using the calcium carbonate instead of the hydroxide. And that is probably because the last time I did this reaction, I actually did use the carbonate. Um, uh, any basic form of calcium, uh, the carbonate, hydroxide, oxide, can be used in this reaction. Uh, so, I stand corrected. And uh, with that, I will measure out some more of our reactant, and we'll go from there. Okay folks, 
I have returned. I just wanted to show you what our solution looks like now. You can see it has grown rather cloudy and that is simply because we have a lot of dissolved calcium in there which is being turned into calcium nitrate and uh, on a side note so I cannot make the same idiotic mistake again I have my calcium hydroxide right here so now I know what the hell I'm adding so I can't make the mistake and talk about the release of carbon dioxide again when Really, we're just uh, releasing some hydrogen and, and oxygen into the atmosphere. So, uh, in here, I weighed out another 20 grams of the calcium hydroxide. And uh, the first time, I did not pulverize it. And you might be able to see that. You can see the chunks kind of floating around there in the glass, or in the beaker, as it were. Uh, and they're not quite reacting very quickly. Uh, partially due to the temperature of the nitric acid itself but also obviously if you've got chunks of your reactant uh, they need to be broken down and basically powderized before they can fully react at their normal rate of reaction speed so what I did with this other 20 grams that I have here is I actually pulverized it in my porter excuse me mortar and pestle uh, so that it should react uh, much n more nicely and readily than what we have in there already. Uh, as a side note here, uh, many of you are probably wondering uh, why I just did not figure out the stoichiometry before I went ahead and did this. And uh, honestly, that's just because I'm lazy and I didn't feel like doing the math. So that's why I'm just kind of winging it here. So. I am going to go ahead and add in this next 20 grams of our calcium hydroxide and we will see what happens from there. Okay, just so you guys can see what is going on here, uh, I have now added, uh, let me see, we have a total of 30 grams in the solution now. And as you can see, it has grown quite turbid and uh, that turbidity that we are seeing in there is our desired target product so that is the reacted calcium hydroxide that has been converted into the calcium nitrate uh, I'm gonna see how this goes I might uh, throw in another 10 to 20 uh, grams uh, I just have to see basically what uh, or how viscous uh, the acid is once I'm done with this because if it gets too thick we're not going to be able to stir it very well uh, however since I'm doing this experiment or synthesis whatever you want to call it uh, I figure I might as well maximize the yield that I can because I'm not going to be able to recover very much nitric acid from this when I am done uh, for one thing and for two nitric acid is pretty easy for me to make whenever I want so it's not that big of a deal if I need to recover it or not uh, so I just wanted to show you guys what was going on here I'm going to uh, let this stir until everything dissolves and goes into solution and reacts while I do that I'm going to go ahead and crush up another uh, 10 to 20 grams of the calcium hydroxide pulverize it to a nice fine powder and uh, I guess then I will decide if I'm going to add it or not so stay tuned and I will be right back okay so just to bring you up to speed on what's going on here so we have all in 60 grams of calcium hydroxide and our solution is starting to get pretty viscous so I am going to stop there um, I just added in the last uh, 10 grams or so about five minutes ago so I'm gonna let this stir until it breaks up all the clumps and then I think what I will do is uh, give it a little bit of gentle heating just to make sure that the reaction has completed as you can see I put a uh, broken petri dish on top of it to kind of uh, mitigate the evaporation of the acid and it has worked pretty well so uh, 
I am going to cut this and I will come back when I put it on the heat so that you can see what is going on uh, once the heat is applied. Alright, so as you can see I switched hot plates now. I am giving it some heat and I'm just going to let this heat up uh, gently. Uh, I might just bring it to a boil and then what I'm going to do is let it cool back down to room temperature. Uh, I will then chill it for a little while to make sure that I get anything that is going to precipitate out of it out. Make sure I don't leave anything behind because uh, when I filter this I am going to try to recover as much of the HNO3 as possible and save it for a later date. Even though it's easy to make, uh, you know, it is rather expensive if you were going to buy it. I think the last time I checked it was anywhere between six and eight hundred dollars for uh, around 96 fluid ounces of it and uh, that is just at the azeotropic um, concentration so what we have right here basically is worth between six and eight hundred dollars for a half gallon so uh, like I said even though it is easy to make I do want to hang on to it uh, because also it, you know it's rather kind of a pain to have to make it every single time that you need it so uh, as we can see here, it is actually starting to boil, if you can see that on top there. So I am going to pull this off of the heat, let it cool down to room temperature. I'll probably stick it in my lab fridge for a little while, and then we'll filter it off. So I will be back when uh, we come to the filtration step. Alright, so our nitric acid has been cooling in the fridge now for about an hour. And you can see there on the bottom, there was our nice precipitate and that is our target product our calcium nitrate uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to filter this off I was thinking about uh, maybe doing a vacuum filtration on this just uh, for expedience sake and uh, then uh, we will take a rough weight of this to try to figure out what our actual yield is uh, or percent yield based on our starting material alright guys so it is finally done filtering you can see here that this is what it looks like now mind you this is just our crude product and you can see there are some little spots of yellow in there and what you're seeing is probably I'm assuming some nitrogen dioxide that was uh, on the side of the funnel when I poured it out um, so it is not 100% dry that being said uh, so I weighed it and this is what we're looking at here so uh, as you see the recovery of the nitric acid is at 110% which is uh, obviously that that is not right so what that tells me is that my nitric acid uh, as it should have has absorbed some atmospheric moisture and th that's not really uh, surprising as it is fairly hygroscopic uh, the thing that is nice though is that uh, at least for my crude measurements uh, I got 33 grams of the uh, <clears throat> calcium nitrate uh, and so let's just even say uh, that we have three grams of water left in there, which I know that we don't have that much. So that would correspond exactly to a 50% yield, which is not great by any means. But, you know, considering that, uh, you know, everything, all of the reactants here are homemade, uh, you know, I don't consider that too bad. Um, also, uh, I'd like to point out that I don't really see too many people actually synthing the calcium nitrate um, from another calcium salt. Usually when I see it done, they are actually just stripping the ammonium ion out of calcium ammonium nitrate that is obtained from cold packs. So, I think this is kind of neat. Uh, at least I hope it's somewhat original. So, uh, on that note... Um, if we were to go ahead and use this calcium nitrate the way it is, it would be perfectly fine. 
Uh, however, I will let this dry a little bit more. I'll probably come back tomorrow and recrystallize it. Um, and then I will see exactly what our yield is. Uh, I'm expecting it to probably go down to around 40%, which, you know, is not great, but I know that I'll have a pure product and, you know, it's starting from all 100% uh, homemade reactants. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And, uh,. I think the next one is going to be on a uh, semi, uh, what do I want to say here, a, a semi um, exotic type of thermite perhaps. Uh, if anybody has any suggestions, feel free to leave it in the comment section. And uh, until next time, I'll see you guys.